So, Blair Witch 2016 is officially out on DVD now, and the movie is a load of bollocks. The end. Nope, just kidding. Even though I hate the movie Blair Witch 2016, I just can't make a short video talking about it in a microsecond. I have to go all in, full depth analysis on this fucking thing, and I'm going to do just that. So we all know the story about The Blair Witch Project, a movie made on a micro-budget that went on to become one of the most profitable independent films of all time. But we all know what the reason for that was, viral marketing, lack of the internet, and marketing. The creators of The Blair Witch Project, Eduardo Sanchez and Daniel Maverick, came up with an entire mythology for The Blair Witch backstory, and they took advantage of the internet. Also, people weren't used to seeing found footage movies at that time. So. Now we fast forward to 17 years later. Can the Blair Witch franchise capture that magic again? Lionsgate, who was releasing your next, um, you know, they'd seen the first two VHS films and, and they were kind of fans of uh, what, what we did in those, I think. And, and they, they had the rights to the Blair Witch Project and they'd been talking to um, Roy Lee and Steve Schneider about maybe doing something new with it. And, and so they kind of invited us to this top secret meeting, which was just a the executives Jason Constantine and Anita Cohen and, and the two of us. Um, and that's when they were kind of like, you know, we have Blair Witch, we're thinking of maybe doing another one. It was a huge secret and the audition process lasted months. I think I auditioned in January and we got started in like April. Well, wait, so, what did they say that it was that you were auditioning for? It was just uh, Adam Wingard's new film. They, they called it The Woods and they, we don't, a lot of the cast hadn't even read the script until we were on the way to Canada to shoot the thing. Like Brandon Scott, uh, who plays Peter, was, was reading it on the flight over. Adam Wingard, Simon Barrett, and Lionsgate revealed their movie simply titled Blair Witch at the 2016 San Diego Comic Con. Initially, the movie was marketed as The Woods in order to surprise fans. Lionsgate knew that the movie was called Blair Witch, but I think the reason for the misdirection and secrecy was to give the original fans that sense of nostalgia. But was this tactic as ingenious as its predecessor? It was revealed at the 2016 San Diego Comic-Con that the horror film titled The Woods was actually the Blair Witch Project sequel that long diehard fans had been waiting for. Audience members walked into a screening for what they thought was a movie called The Woods, but during the screening it was quickly revealed that the film was actually Simon Barrett and Adam Wingard's Blair Witch. The initial reviews for the film were quite positive. The marketing campaign for the film had taglines suggesting such things as Even one review went as far as to say that Blair Witch 2016 is one of the scariest movies ever made. I can understand the nostalgia for a particular project such as this, I have to admit. Before this film's release, I was extremely pumped to watch this thing in the theater. But going as far as to make a statement as bold as that really elevates the anticipation for a film such as this to colossal proportions. So, my question is, did the surprise reveal contribute to the positive reviews that this film was getting? Or was Blair Witch 2016 as scary as reviewers made it out to be? What is that? 
The guy who uploaded this video said it was from a tape he found in the Black Hills woods. I think that might be my sister. Do you believe in the stories about the Blair Witch? I'm so sorry. Blair Witch 2016 got its official wide release on September 16th, 2016. The fans' reactions to the movie were widely negative. Its Rotten Tomatoes critic percentage currently sits at a whopping 36% on the tomato meter, which is certified rotten. Its critics' consciousness says, Blair Witch dolls out a handful of effective scares, but, aside from a few new twists, it mainly offers a belated rehash of the original and far more memorable first film. In my review of the film, I said, Blair Witch is a remake masquerading around as a sequel. And also, Book of Shadows Blair Witch 2 is a far better film than this piece of shit. And at least that movie tried to do something different. On the other hand, the film did make its $5 million budget back at the box office. The movie's worldwide return currently sits at a $45.2 million, so you could say that the studio did make a good profit off this film despite its negative reviews. However, I believe the reason for that is suckers, like myself, believed in all the hype surrounding this movie's release. I wanted to be brought back to the Blair Witch world with a fresh new scary take on the franchise. I remained optimistic going into the film and I left disappointed with the way the final product had turned out. Blair Witch 2016 Review with Spoilers Now before we get off into the negatives of this review, I want to talk about two positives. Number one being, the movie starts off great, running through the rust and powerhouse and seeing the supposed image of Heather was awesome. Two. Lisa's explanation of the events of the first movie leading into this was chilling. Now let's get off into the negatives, and believe me, I have a lot of negatives. The movie should have given more emphasis on why James was so obsessed with finding his sister Heather in those woods after 20 or so years later. I didn't find any real emotional importance as to why James was looking for his sister. The movie just seemed like it needed a good enough excuse for the characters to go off into the woods to be killed. So, the whole idea and reasoning as to why the characters go into the woods seem pretty far-fetched to me. There's no justification for the kids to go off into the woods based off some video that somebody found and then posted online. I just needed something more believable and concrete to make their initial reactions plausible. Like really. You think the police missed something? Plus, why now? Why is James so eager to go out into the woods at that point in time? Why didn't he try sooner? Why does he even try at all? If he did find something concrete, would he have taken it back to the authorities? But seriously, did he really think he was going to find Heather just sitting on a rock somewhere, waiting for him to show up? 2. This movie is a carbon copy of the original. The interior motel room design is the exact same as the first movie. And then, also, them filming themselves walking away from their vehicles is the exact same thing from the first movie. Now that's just nitpicking, but I'm just saying. 3. The movie fucked up the Blair Witch mythology. Rustin Parr didn't stand in the corner. He made the kid stand in the corner while he would kill the other kid. Even the guy in the first movie who Heather and Josh and Mike were interviewing said that. 4. You can die just from looking at the witch? That's stupid. 5. The witch got straightened out on a makeshift rack. I hate that idea, because now we have some stupid looking creature to look at. Seriously, what a way to demystify the witch. 6. Simon Barrett says that that's not the witch we saw in the film. I call bullshit on that. He's just covering his ass from the backfire of some fans like myself. They retcon how she died in the woods, adding in the being on a makeshift rap park on purpose so everyone would think that that thing at the end was the witch. 7. The sound effects sound amplified, so they don't feel authentic, they feel forced. 8. 
The consistent jump scares are absurd. I read online that the sound design team added in at least a hundred different mic bump sounds to make the movie sound more authentic. I respect what you guys do, but really, those sounds during every jump scare scene can make somebody's ears bleed. 9. Why did Ashley climb the tree to retrieve the drone? What was she going to do with it at night? I believe that scene was just used to have another jump scare. A tree jump scare scene. Ooh. 10. The tunnel scene was nice, but nothing really happened, and so the scene was pointless. Lame should have just killed Lisa when he first encountered her, but then he had to kill her. And if he would have killed her, there'd be no movie. They could have done something else with that scene, like they could have had some secret door or passageway or something that led to something and explained something. I don't know. The scene could have led to something. I believe it was just there to set up a situation. During that moment, it was good, and the actor sold that performance, but the end result made me think that that scene was just rather pointless, so I didn't like it ultimately. 11. The time loop thing was dumb and pointless. It really didn't add or do anything for the story. 12. I don't give a damn if this creature is the Blair Witch or not. You shouldn't have shown anything at all, especially this quarantine looking monster. Overall, the last 15 minutes of this movie was pretty good. There's a tunnel scene near the end, and it delivers on tension, but it's rather pointless. There's a gross out leg scene, and it delivers on grossness, but it ultimately serves no purpose. There was a manipulative moment executed by Lane and his girlfriend, which was interesting, but unfortunately, it went nowhere. Mm, I didn't like Blair Witch, and I don't recommend it for hardcore Blair Witch fans like myself. Please, stay away from this atrocity, because it doesn't offer anything new or exciting to the series. Blair Witch 2016 is just a regurgitated mess trying to be a sequel, and it's completely horrible. And like I said before, honestly, Book of Shadows Blair Witch 2 is far better than this piece of shit, and at least that movie tried to do something different.